hey there folks, it's been a while since I've done a 100 days, and just in case if you can't read, I'm doing it in Subnautica, because who doesn't like a little bit of thalassophobia in their lives? I know I do. I don't actually, I just said that for comedic effect. To tell you the truth, I've never actually played this game before, and more than that, I don't even know what happens in the story. Basically, I had no idea what to expect. And I'm not just saying that for, for Flash, like, I literally had no idea what I was doing. Kinda like a certain group of people on a certain submarine. So come on and strap yourself in so you can join me in my fun moments as well as my not-so-fun moments. Anyway, I hope you brought your waterproof snacks, cause we're going for a swim. Zero human life signs detected. Hmm. Wow, that's a lot of water. Like I said earlier, I had absolutely no clue what I was doing, but that's okay, because honestly, it wasn't too hard to figure things out. For example, there were all these little rocks lying around the place outside, and if you went and hit them a couple times, they'd give you some sort of a resource. Then, if I headed back to my life pod, there was this handy dandy little crafting station that would tell me everything I needed to make, well, everything. Well, most things. Well, some things. By the end of the day, I had crafted myself a brand new shiny oxygen tank, as well as a couple more tools that would help me along the way. I don't remember which ones they were, because my notes are not specific. Day two, I crafted myself a repair tool and fixed the pod. Ugh, it was nice to not have all these dangling pieces that would fly around and cause me physical harm. I discovered that I would need blueprints to make a lot of stuff in this game, and you'd acquire said blueprints by scanning things. I found all the parts I would need to get the blueprint for the Z Glide, which is basically this little machine that allows me to get around faster and hightailed it back to the base so I could actually make it. It was pretty cheap, not a big deal. Now that I had a better form of mobility, it was time to set my sights on something I was really looking forward to base building, but in order to do that, I would need this habitat tool. And for a habitat tool, I needed silver. And guess what I spent the rest of the day looking for and yet couldn't find? Silver. You know, if I'm being honest, this situation isn't looking too good, you know, the whole being stranded on an ocean island thing, but all things considered, it isn't that bad. What could possibly make this worse? Ah, a premonition of doom. Hey, on the bright side, I found some silver, so now I could finally craft that tool I was trying to make. I set up a foundation and then realized I would be needing a lot of titanium to make a base. I decided I would worry about that later and for now I would continue to explore. I eventually found this wreckage from the Aurora and I decided to explore it a little bit just in case if there was anything I could scavenge. I looked around for a possible way in because I saw a bunch of doors but honestly I couldn't figure it out so I decided I would come back later. Day 4 I used my radio for the first time and got a distress signal from another life pod. Our pod was almost crushed by the Seamoth Bay on the way down. Now we're hanging on the edge of a cave system, and this grim-looking snake thing's trying to eat through the hull. Yeah, they're probably fine. While I was out and about, I found and scanned all the fragments I would need to get the blueprint for a mobile vehicle bay, which I'm not really sure what that did, but I'm sure it's important. I actually had everything I needed to craft it, but releasing it was a whole nother monster of its own. I just couldn't seem to figure out how to get it done. I didn't realize until later that you had to equip it to your hot bar and then release it, and then it works. Ooh, cool. Uh, what does it even do? I returned to the life pod where I got another distress signal from somewhere else. We've landed a kilometer from the crash site, but there's radiation in between us and the rendezvous. Request immediate assistance. Sick yeah, they're probably fine. I don't have time to worry about anybody else. I just want to worry about the Aurora and fixing it up so I can get out of here. Emergency. A quantum detonation has occurred in the Aurora's drive core. The reactor will reach a supercritical state in T minus 10, 9, 8, oh, 7. Oh, that seems six, like a problem. Five. Everything sucks. I'm all alone. We're all going to die. 
The game gave me a blueprint for a radiation suit right after the Aurora blew up, so I figured it would probably want me to go over there at some point. And do you remember those people that were sending the distress call, and I said they'd be fine? I went to go check out the source of the distress signal on day 5 to see if everyone was doing okay, and uh, they were not doing okay. Listen, I didn't want everybody to actually be dead, I was just a little bit emotional after the ship exploded. I did visit a shipwreck where I got a bunch of blueprints, like a Seamoth, a Bi- Bioreactor, a scanning room, and a weird propulsion cannon thingy. I don't really know what that is, but I do like the sound of cannon. I spent some time after that trying to get everything I needed for the radiation suit and crafted it once I did. I was also running out of storage space inside the life pod, so it was time to set up a little bit of floating storage outside. On day 6, I finally figured out what that mobile vehicle bay was used for, because I finally had everything I needed to make a SEMA. It was supposed to be some sort of mini submarine, so I was pretty excited. The Seamoth is a fast, safe mode of transport, but remember that swimming is good for your glutes and endorphin levels. Oh. My. Gosh. I love it. This is the best thing since sliced bread. Heck, it's better than sliced bread. Apparently I could only go 200 meters deep with it though, because as soon as I tried to go after this other distress call I had gotten at the life pod, my whole thing started taking damage. Leave me alone! Ah! Akira! Ah! Listen man, I can't resist. These jokes were served to me on a silver platter. Day 7. Another day, another distress call, except I was in for something quite different. There was an island. Oh my goodness. It's been so long since I've seen nature like this. The trees, the rustling of the leaves in the wind. The crabs? Ew, crabs! Listen man, I don't care what they're actually called, I'm calling them crabs. Disgusting. There was a cool base down lower, but I also noticed that there were two mountain peaks. Each had its own respective little chunk of base. I reached the summit of one, and spent almost the entire rest of the day trying to reach the summit of the other. There was definitely an easy path up there, I just wasn't finding it. Day 8, I returned back to the life pod and began experimenting with base building. I really just couldn't get the hang of it, and what I really wanted to do was build way out of the water and build something super cursed, as high as it could go. Unfortunately, I couldn't figure out how to do that, so it would just have to be like this for now. Also, there was no air or electricity inside there, and I had no idea how to wreck that. Then I just decided I didn't like the location and deconstructed the whole thing. We would try somewhere else. Day 9 was quite educational because I finally learned how to properly build a base. I don't care if it was self-taught, it's still educational. Turns out for oxygen you had to attach a pump to the base and then attach pipes to one another leading all the way to the surface. It was pretty tedious, and I also realized I would still need power to actually get it working. Getting power was easier than I thought, though. All I had to do was attach these solar panels to the base, and it just did the rest during the day. Also, I have no idea why, but I decided to build my base a little bit deep and 150 meters away from the pod, so I had to go back every single time I wanted to go get more stuff. Day 10, I was spending a little bit more attention to detail on the base so I could officially move in. I added some lockers, another solar panel, and then eventually another foundation because there was this thing that said whole integrity for the base and uh, it was probably important so I wanted to have as much of that as I could get. Last thing I did that day was set up a fabricator. Now we were cooking. Day 11, I continued to work on my base. I added on a special room called the moon pool. It looked like it was supposed to be some sort of dock or something. Day 12, I docked my Seamoth into my moon pool for the first time, and I realized I could make a module to stick on the wall that would allow me to customize it. So, naturally, I put it in my channel colors, and I also named it Sullivan. Hello, Sullivan. You're my only friend. I also built a scanner room because I was really curious to see what that actually did, and as it turns out, it just helps you locate resources very handy. Day 13, I was a thirsty, thirsty boy. Using coral tube samples and salt, I discovered a more effective way to make water that was a lot better than using those bladder fish. I really wanted to upgrade the depth module on my Seamoth, so the rest of the day was spent looking for titanium so I could do so. Day 14, I wanted a laser cutter, but it required some materials that I would have to go deeper to get. So I started exploring this cave full of fluorescent mushrooms that was really close to my base, but... Oh, it, it had some things in there that I was just not a fan of. Oh! Ew! Dude! What the fu- 
Ignoring the creepy eel things, once I had gotten my fill of all the resources I could carry, I headed back to the base to craft the laser cutter. The rest of the day was spent making preparations so I could go visit the Aurora for the first time. Aurora. Uh, Aurora. Ugh. Day 15, I made the journey to the Aurora, but I'm gonna be honest, I was having a hard time finding the entrance. The really ominous roars in the distance weren't helping me either. I really hope that was just ambience. <laughs> Hey, I've seen one of those things before. Somehow it took me most of the day, but I finally found the entrance, which was in this big, obvious open area. I have no idea how I missed it. Uh, uh, crabs! I found the door that looked like the place I was supposed to enter through, but I just couldn't figure out how to do it because there was a giant pile of stuff in the way. Finally, I just decided to look it up, and as it turns out, I needed a propulsion cannon which I didn't make. See, I knew it was important. Day 16, I crafted the propulsion cannon with ease and went back to the Aurora. Ah, now I had everything I needed to finally raid the Aurora. Nope, that's a fire. I did not bring a fire extinguisher. Only two <laughs> words are coming to mind right now. Pain and suffering. On my way back to the Aurora on day 17, I found Life Pod 4 just chilling out. I uh, probably wasn't supposed to find it yet, but here we are. Also, we're just going to ignore the fact that there was already an extinguisher right there next to the fire at the Aurora. Okay, I didn't know it at the time. Understandably, it was a giant mess inside the ship, and uh, there was a lot of stuff to see and a lot of stuff to scan. Like this prawn suit. Ooh, that looks pretty cool. Eventually, I found myself in the crew's living quarters. Some of the doors were locked, but it was simply just a puzzle of finding out where the codes were lying elsewhere in the living quarters. The only thing I couldn't seem to get the codes to was the captain's cabin, but eh, I don't know. Day 18, I found the core of the Aurora, and I began repairing it so it would stop leaking radiation. After I repaired the core, I was pretty much at a loss of what to do next, so I started looking into my PDA messages and found that there was a life pod 6. Might as well go looking for it. It didn't take me too long to actually find it on day 19, but it was super underwhelming, so I just went back to the Aurora. I spent the rest of the day trying to build this weird staircase up to this part that I thought was important in the ship. Don't worry about it, my motives are beyond your understanding. Day 20, I realized that what I was doing was useless, so I went back home and placed a radio inside my new base. I immediately got a distress call for yet another life pod, so I went out to go explore it. Once again, not much to see. Day 21, I spent the entire day getting as much titanium as I possibly could. I needed all this titanium so I could make titanium ingots, which I would need to make plasteel ingots, which I would need to make the prawn suit. <sighs> Man, plasteel ingots? What a pain to make, can I just say that? Hey, at least I had plenty of lithium from that trip down into that creepy mushroom forest. Hey, you know what I just said about getting plenty of lithium? Yeah, that was a lie. Oh, back into the spoopy cave I go. I don't want to be here, but I need the lithium, so please get me lithium so I can get out. Fortunately, it all went without a hitch. I was back up in shallow waters and gathering crystal to make windows in no time. Also, I just gotta say, Windows look great in this game. Now the last thing I needed for the prawn suit was aerogel, and I had enough to craft one, but I needed one more, which means I needed a ruby. And where exactly I would get that ruby, I have no freaking clue. So the first place I looked for a ruby on day 23 was the Spoopy Cave. I'm just calling it the Spoopy Cave now, I like the name. Naturally, it didn't give me any rubies, because of course, but I did stumble across this base that had fragments that gave me the blueprint to a modification station. I don't know what that is, but I'm sure it's good. Day 24, my hunt for rubies continued, and this time it led me to yet another island. I thought it was the same one at first, but then realized all the caves were full of lithium, which was nice, except I needed rubies. In the middle of my search, I noticed that on the other side of the island, there was this giant alien skyscraper looking thing. I mean, I assume it's alien, it looks alien. I, I'm assuming dudes didn't, anyway. In the middle of the night though, I did finally find three rubies in the same spot, but they were being puppy guarded by some shark thingies. Day 25, I was super eager. I returned home from my adventure and crafted the prawn suit. 
I wanted to be able to dock my Seamoth and Prawn Suit at the same exact time, so I set up another moon pool. I gotta say, that machine looks pretty good in the Chufi channel colors. Oh yeah, I also named it Wigumzinator because I wanted to bring Wigums back, but uh... I just felt like it was weird to give that name to a robotic suit. I really didn't do much on day 26 except wander around in my prawn suit and collect as many resources as I could. Day 27 I wanted to know what the modification station did so I set one up and that was a great idea. I made myself better flippers, a better oxygen tank, and even a better depth module for my Seamoth. Oh my goodness, the places we're gonna go, Sullivan! Day 28, I upgraded the scanning room range so I could see resources from farther away. Looking back, this was also useless because I didn't really use the room that much. Then one of my roommates let slip that there was an even bigger submarine that I could craft, and it was called the Cyclops, but I would need to find a lot of parts for it, so I decided to set off and start doing that. Oh yeah, bigger machine! Machine. Oh yeah, bigger machine. Oh yeah, bigger machine. Day 29, I went to go visit the Aurora. Aurora, oh, I can't say it. I went to go visit the big boy shipwreck because I figured it would be a good place to start to find all those Cyclops parts. I found all three engine fragments, evidently I would have to find nine different parts in order to get the whole blueprint. Also from a distance, I got a good look at that thing that attacked me earlier in the playthrough. And according to the internet, they're called Reapers. Reaper? Aw oh, man. Sorry, I, I just couldn't resist. Day 30, my search took me over to the mushroom forest, which I thought that would be off the beaten path, but apparently not because I kept finding whole fragments there. Also, there were three other bridge fragments that I was supposed to find that I guess I had already found because when I found the third whole part, I just got the whole blueprint for the Cyclops. So yippee, I guess. But this bad boy was gonna be expensive, so I began preparing the things I would need to make it, or at least the things that I had to make it which was not a lot. Day 31 was mostly me just running around and trying to assemble everything I would need to craft the Cyclops. I was interrupted later though because I got thirsty, so I crafted a large amount of water. Hopefully that would keep me for a while. And after that, it was back to grinding for titanium because apparently that's the one resource I never seem to have enough of. Day 32, I had everything I needed to finally make the Cyclops. All right, let's see what the hype is about. Holy cow, that thing's huge. This thing seemed a lot bigger on the inside. It had all these different rooms, storage, even a place where you could dock your Seamoth or Prawn suit. Like, bro? I think I'm in love? Day 33, I customized the Cyclops and it was looking pretty slick. I pretty much did nothing else that day except wander around in it, just kind of getting a feel for the controls, which probably wasn't a great idea because I had limited power. Day 34, I was tipped off by a friend that I could go find a compass. Honestly, I was still having trouble finding my way around the map, so a compass would have been brilliant. Except when I went looking for it, I found nothing. I even looked it up online. It was supposed to be at Life Pod 3, but there was nothing. I, I guess I had already been here. Hey, I did find the parts for a nuclear reactor, which I would never use, but you know, hey. Day 35, I got another message on the radio for Life Pod 2, so I set out again to go find it. I found a couple new wrecks on the way, and they gave me plenty of titanium with all the scraps they had to offer. Then I discovered the blueprint for the Cyclops depth module. That would be huge, I think. How deep am I actually supposed to go in this game? Day 36, I began to explore this weird dark area and came across an alien containment blueprint. And it looked like a giant aquarium. <laughs> Base aesthetic. The rest of the day, I grabbed everything I would need to actually make one of these things and put it down. Day 37, I decided that one alien containment wasn't enough and I stacked another on top. And then I was out of titanium again. I had to go get more. Please make it stop. Finally, I put a radio inside my Cyclops and then repositioned the fabricator that I had previously put in. I guess I just forgot to mention that. Day 38, I was exploring another wreck and found all the fragments I would need for a battery charger. Hey, that's huge. It wasn't too expensive to make, so I went home and set one up and began charging. The rest of the day, I spent looking for the compass again and still no luck. 
How the heck am I supposed to find this thing if it wasn't in the original place where it was intended to be? Interesting things began to happen on day 39. I got a radio from the Sunbeam, which was evidently another ship that was coming to get me, and it gave me coordinates of where they would pick me up. Because it was such a special occasion, I decided to take my Cyclops with me and discovered that it was actually at that one island with the giant alien skyscraper. I discovered the entrance into the side of that skyscraper and thought it was pretty cool, but I needed a purple tablet in order to get in there. So instead, I just explored and found some purple tablets as well as this weird little archway thingy inside the mountain. Day 40, I still had some time to kill before the sunbeam actually got here. I went to the nearby kelp forest and got some creep vines so I could make a med kit producer inside my cyclops. I also did some reorganizing before finally naming my cyclops. I had asked my server what I should name it and got three good results which I put in that poll on my YouTube community post. If you want possible opportunities to be able to interact with my videos like this, make sure to join Join my Discord, I put the link in the description. But uh, yeah. Now my Cyclops had the name Squirrel Nuts. Day 41, the Sunbeam had finally arrived. But uh, some more interesting stuff was about to happen. Hmm. Something in the deep confines of my mind tells me that skyscrapers are not supposed to move like that. Hey, it kinda looks like a gun. <laughs> it, it kinda looks like a gun. Hey guys? Uh, guys? Hey, uh, guys? Well, that's unfortunate. Hey, I've got a good idea. Let's explore the giant gun that just went off. You know, I was so convinced that this thing was actually a skyscraper. As I explored the big giant gun, I found these green glowing cubes called ion cubes. At the very end of my exploration, there was this little machine that, uh, did this. Oh. Control panel is broadcasting a message. Translation reads Warning Infected individuals may not disable the weapon. This planet is under quarantine. Yeah, so apparently this giant gun is a quarantine gun to keep anybody from landing or leaving because I'm sick. You know, I was a little bit confused at first about the whole Aurora crashing thing, but uh. Not anymore. I would spend the next two days at home working on upgrades for my Seamoth and Cyclops. Honestly, my notes don't tell me what exactly I put in my Seamoth, so I honestly can't remember. I did actually put a fuel efficiency module into my Cyclops. That's right, you glutton. Now you can't burn as much power. Day 44, I did some more exploring. This time I was in another mushroom forest. Different from the other one, I guess. There was another wreck here, but this one was kind of interesting because it was perched on top of a giant mushroom. Exploring it was amazing though, because I found the fragments to a power cell charger. That means I would never have to keep making power cells for my Cyclops because I could just keep recharging them. So I set up two chargers inside my Cyclops, which yes, I learned later that this was a terrible idea Idea, but for now, just let it be. Day 45, I spent a lot of time organizing my materials because everything had become complete chaos in my storage. Towards the end of the day, I got another radio message, but this time it was huge because it actually gave me the passcode to the captain's cabin in the Aurora. Oh, that's how you get it. So in the dead of night, I set off and began making the trip back. It took a little bit of time, but I finally got to the captain's quarters on day 46. I downloaded some information from this interface and immediately got the blueprint to this rocket pad. That was definitely the way I was supposed to get off this planet, but something tells me I wouldn't be allowed to leave just yet. I had left a lot of food and water stuff behind on my last trip to the Aurora, so I made sure to pick a lot of that up and scavenge whatever I could before heading back to the base. A47, I really didn't do much, but I did finally move the power cell chargers out of the Cyclops. I was basically charging power cells with other power cells. It was just an infinite loop of not having enough power. I know, unbelievable, right? A48, I was exploring a bit more, and this time I found a wreck just on the border of the Grand Reef. It was here that I found fragments to the prawn suit drill arm. I didn't stick around long, I went right back to the base so I could craft it. After I had equipped it on my prawn suit, I decided to take it out for a little spin just to test it out and boy, oh, this would make everything so much easier. Day 49, my inventory was completely full of resources so I headed back to the base to drop them off. But I still wanted more drilling adventures so I headed down into the spoopy cave so I could get as much lithium as I could hold. 
Upon returning home, I set up some more storage in my Cyclops and began organizing. Day 50, I found this cool cliffside in my sea moth that bordered the crash site and it had all these resources all over the face of it. When I returned home, I slapped a storage module onto my sea moth before heading out to the blood kelp to see if I could find more rubies. Because I definitely didn't google where I could find a lot of rubies. I probably didn't need this many rubies, but you know what? It was better to be safe than sorry. Also, this weird creepy thing attached itself to my arm at one point and I started taking a lot of damage. <laughs> Why? Day 51, I upgraded the depth modules for both my Seamoth and my Cyclops. It wasn't too terribly expensive. You know, just a couple of plasteel ingots for each one. I also started reinforcing some of the walls of my base so it would be stronger. Day 52 was spent running around and getting quartz mostly. And I got so much quartz. And what exactly do I need all this quartz for? Well, I'm glad you asked. Base aesthetic. Pure and simple. These glass corridors look so much better than the normal ones. Day 53, I was pretty much just upgrading stuff. I'm sorry if that's not specific because once again, my notes are not specific. Man, I gotta help myself out more. I also made some more water because I'm a thirsty boy. The first half of day 54, I just kept reinforcing the hole inside my base. Did I need this much integrity? No, but you know, you can't go wrong with 50 points. Then I got bored and went out looking for more wrecks. I found this one where I got the alien containment blueprint from, but I guess I didn't explore it thoroughly enough because I had the fragments to a water purifier in there. Oh my goodness, I'm a thirsty boy. A thirsty boy needs this. Day 55, I'm just gonna dumb this one down. I got more quartz and built more base. Day 56, and I'm still adding stuff to my habitat, like this water purifier. Ooh. Fancy. Day 57, I couldn't help but notice that I was beginning to outgrow my need for solar panels. My thirst for power had clearly become too much for them to handle. So I set up two thermal power plants at the vent that was somewhat close to my base and then connected it with these wireless Bluetooth power thingies. I, I don't know what they are or why this works. It shouldn't work. Later that day, I got some creep vine goo and then made a whole bunch of silicone rubber. More than I would probably ever use for the rest of this playthrough. Days 58 through 59, I took my Cyclops and began heading down to the blood kelp area where evidently there was an entrance to a cave that I needed to go to. All I knew is that I was looking for another alien facility. And that's where I found the Lost River. Mmm. I love that place, especially the ghost leviathans. Mmm. I eventually found the alien base and began exploring. There wasn't much to see, but I did learn a bit more about the bacteria. That it's not good for me. What the hell? As I tried to make my way back out of the Lost River in my Cyclops, which number one was a bad idea to begin with, but you know, live and learn, I got attacked by the Ghost Leviathan. Engine powering down. Ooh. Hey, um, thirst? Now's not the best time to be at zero. Oh, that's unfortunate. Did I jump scare you? Yeah, I bet I did. You coward. You make me sick. Your weakness is pathetic. So fortunately, I respawned in my Cyclops. I managed to repair everything on the outside hole and then got the heck out of Dodge. A60 after I returned home, I took my prawn suit down into the spoopy cave and got as much magnetite as I could. Oh boy, did I ever have plans for this stuff. Day 61, I crafted the prawn suit jet upgrade using some of the materials I had gathered in the Lost River. I already knew I would have to inevitably go deeper at some point, so having a longer lifespan on my jetpack would certainly help. Day 62, I decided that two thermal plants just weren't enough for me, so I began putting down some more. I did actually end up dying at one point because I wasn't careful enough and I got cooked. <laughs> After that, I returned to that one little floating island with all the different bases all over it and scanned what I could to get more structure blueprints. I mainly just wanted these grow beds though, that way it can start growing gel sacs. Infinite gel sac glitch? A63, I discovered that if you hit your gel sacs with a knife, you get their seeds. Oh yeah, this farm was about to thrive. I had to go on another titanium run because, of course, I had completely run out of it again. But then I decided, hey, why not reinforce my base some more? <laughs> oh yeah, perfect 61. A64, it was time to tend to my gel sac farm. And let's just say the harvest was plentiful. The rest of the day was spent looking for the lost river again on my cyclops. I have no idea how I found it the first 
first time so easily, because I wandered around the whole day and found nothing. My sense of direction is bipolar, I guess. Day 65, I upgraded the Cyclops depth module again. Although I'm gonna be honest, I never really took it down this far, so I didn't need it. And of course, making it left me completely without titanium, so I had to go looking for scraps again. You know, I've reinforced this base enough. You know what it needs? More power. And I don't need those weak little solar panels. Why would I do that when I can get the 24-7 efficiency of the thermal plants? All right, so let's add some more, and some more, and some more. Hold, please. Ah, oh, yeah, that should be enough. Mmm, oh, look at all that power. Day 69, nice. I went looking for the Lost River again. And, uh, I got lost again. At least I have this Reaper attack to make the day interesting, right? 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 Day 70, I finally found the Lost River. It should not have been that hard. I made my way downward for a little bit before realizing I was lacking somewhere. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. I don't need it. I don't need it. I definitely... Okay, I'm hydrated. Now I can go down. Going deeper wasn't exactly the hardest thing because you just follow the giant cavern. First I saw the lava and then it opened up into this giant area. I have no idea what it's called, but it's cool. And it also has kyanite. I needed kyanite for depth modules and stuff. You know, I'm really far down. It would be a shame if there were any leviathans in the area. I shouldn't have said anything. I shouldn't have said anything. What even is this? After somehow managing to survive that leviathan attack, I got lost, but not too lost. I did find my way out eventually. A72, I returned home and upgraded my prawn suit's depth module. Next up, I wanted to make the little thermal rechargey thingy on my prawn suit, so that way whenever I was in the lava, it just recharged my power. For that, I would need, uh blood oil, so I went to the blood kelp region. Oh yeah, and as it turns out, I didn't actually need blood oil, and I didn't realize that until I got back to the base. I needed deep shrooms. You know, the other thing in the blood kelp area. Uh, <laughs> why? I got quite a few of them, but then I ran into a warper, and that was not a very fun experience. Once I got back home, I crafted the thermal thingy. You know, the the thermal thingy. You know the one. The rest of the day I went back into the spoopy cave to check out the base because one of my roommates had tipped me off that there was a second base somewhere where I could go find something very cool. So uh, I didn't find any clues so I just googled it and it was in the Grand Reef. So uh, off to the Grand Reef we go I guess. I found another wreck but there was a warp regarding it and it nearly killed me so I had to leave. I did end up finding the Sea Treader's Path even if accidentally. Oh, look at them go. Day 75 I found another wreck down there and this time I got the blueprint for the reinforced diving suit. Finally, I found the second base, and I decided to explore it a little bit, but there was a crab squid outside, and a warper, which kept teleporting me out. It was literally the worst combination in the world. But apparently the crab squid will still attack your sea moth even if you aren't in it, so uh, it just kind of disappeared at one point, and I just assume it got ate. And of course, no sea moth means no source of oxygen, so I was the second one to go. So the rest of the day was spent making another sea moth. How fun. I didn't get to explore the base fully, so I made my way back on day 76. Reaper? Oh I, man. Oi, Jufi, this is a life-threatening situation. Now's not so, the time. Sorry, sorry, my bad. I got caught up in the moment. I returned to the base, and this time I explored the entire thing. There was a room with an orange tablet and then an egg just kind of right next to it. Didn't know what it was, but I figured I'd hatch it in my alien containment and see what it was. Why me? Day 77, I named my Seamoth Sullivan, but sad. I also popped another tier 3 depth module in it, so now I could actually go places with it. The rest of the day was spent grinding resources so I could craft the reinforced diving suit at the end of the day. Day 78, I set up a glass roof over one of my alien containments, and holy crap, that looked good. Also, that mysterious egg I got, it hatched, and it was a cuttlefish. All that pain, the death, the extra sea moth, it was all worth it. I mean, look at him, he's so cute. I also crafted these special fins at the end of the day that would charge whatever tool I was holding for as long as I was swimming with the tool. 
and the fins. Day 79, I went back down to the lava lake, against my better judgment probably, and went looking for anything that could be alien. It took some looking around, but I finally did find it in this little hole in the side of the mountain. It's not exactly the hardest to see, but it's not exactly the easiest to see. I'm surprised I found it. After finding the entrance though, it wasn't too hard to find the actual thermal plant itself. I'm glad I brought my tablets with me because there were a couple doors I needed to unlock, including this one to a blue tablet. In here, I was told that there was another alien containment facility just a bit deeper, as well as the recipe for ion power cells. Come here to me. Excuse me, what the heck was that? I got back to the Cyclops on day 83, and apparently you can make tablets? I saw the recipe for the blue tablet in the fabricator, I guess I got it after I scanned it, um, so I made it. I don't know why, I just wanted to, I guess, don't judge me. So I made the journey back home, and then put two more water purifiers inside my base. On day 84, I took the day off and just worked on my base. Pretty much the entire time was just either me running off to go get more quartz, or just putting down glass structures. Day 85, I decided I would be begin crafting the rocket. I mean, why not? Might as well be ready. The platform itself wasn't too terribly expensive, but then I learned there was going to be a lot more I would have to make. Okay. Yeah, might as well start with this support. Gotta start somewhere. Day 86, I spent a bunch of time looking for silver. I swear, as soon as I need it, I can't find any. I managed to scrap together enough silver to make the Neptune's thrusters at the end of the day. Day 87, I was still scrounging for scraps, any materials that I needed. By the end of the day, I had the fuel supply built. And looking back, this was actually really good progress, even though it felt like it was going super slow. Day 88, fortunately, I had most of everything I needed already to make the cockpit, so that was pretty much a piece of cake. The next two days would be spent in the deep waters. I had returned to the lava area to see if I could find the next alien location to go visit. I am what you seek, want to help you. You know what's better than being chased by one sea dragon? Being chased by two sea dragons. Mmm. <laughs> Translating local alien broadcast. Warning, vaccine development program terminated. Emperor A fetching project terminated. Live specimens terminated. Evacuate immediately. So evidently, this was the main alien containment facility, and I spent some time just scanning stuff and trying to learn more of the lore. As it turns out, these aliens couldn't find a cure for whatever sickness I had, and that's why they quarantined the planet. I kept seeing things that kept referencing a creature called the Sea Emperor, and if I'm being honest, I wasn't too excited to figure out what that was. against it as they did. built a passage to reach the world outside. I asked them for this freedom, but they could not hear me. If you help us, 
I will give you freely what the others tried in vain to take. Uh, what just happened? So apparently I was supposed to make this enzyme that would help hatcher kids using samples from all these different plants all over the map. So I grabbed myself a mushroom tree sample and another sample from the blood kelp. Evidently I needed two samples from the blood kelp, but I coincidentally already had another random one just lying around in the cyclops. I also grabbed a metric butt ton of quartz. I had glass plants. Because of course I had glass plants. Chufi always has glass plants. Day 92 I got myself the bulb sample, and I only needed one more, which was the sea crown, and I scoured all over the place for this thing and could not find it. Well, I mean, I still had a lot more map to cover, so maybe I should hold off on saying that. Then an idea hit me. In that last alien containment chamber where the Sea Emperor was, there were a whole bunch of different portals that I could activate. What if those portals took me to exactly what I needed? So that's what I did, and it seemed like a good theory at first, but still, no Sea Crown. At the very end of the day, I kinda got desperate and started poking around the Sea Emperor's place, cause you never know, and yes, that's where it was. I feel really dumb now. Day 94, I went home as fast as I could so I could craft the enzyme and then return to the Sea Emperor's habitat. Swimming for the shallows. I thank you. Their freedom is my end. What will it be like, I wonder, to go to sleep and never wake up? Perhaps next we meet, I will be an ocean current, carrying seas to a new land. Or a creature so small, it sees the gaps between the grains of sand. Farewell. I'm not gonna lie, this was actually pretty sad. I mean, I'm glad its babies are free, they deserve that life, but man, it bothered me that there was nothing I could do. So I left feeling pretty depressed and went to the alien quarantine gun. There we go. Now I could leave. But I couldn't leave just yet. I still had six more days to go. After I returned home on day 95, I added another multi-purpose room, which would become my bedroom. So basically nothing but pure aesthetic. And I spent the entirety of day 96 decorating. Days 97 and 98, I would spend entirely working on building glass domes so I could put them over my alien containments. But this required a lot of enameled glass, which I needed stalker teeth to make, and I was having problems finding it. They were just really hard to see there on the ocean floor. But then I realized, uh, I could just use the scanner room to find them. Once again, I I feel really stupid. Day 99, I put the crowning jewel on my base, which was the observatory that was connected right to my bedroom. I put up some last minute decorations and then just enjoyed the last view I would have. You know, it's funny. At the end of every playthrough I do, it just seems like at the very end, everything, like the scenery, it all just seems more beautiful.
communications systems array active. Auxiliary power unit online. Ready to launch on your command, Captain. Launch in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time capsule jettisoned. Caution, approaching orbital debris field. Orbital debris field clear. Performing gravity turn maneuver. Confirm destination coordinates. Nearest interstellar phase gate. Engaging ion boosters in 3, 2, 1. What is a wave without the ocean? A beginning without an end. They are different, but they go together. Now you go among the stars, and I fall among the sand. We are different, but we go together. I hope you guys enjoyed the video because I really liked making it. Nice little break from Ark. If you aren't in my Discord server and want to join, I put the link in the description, so you should join. I hope to see you there. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content, and I hope to see you in future videos on the channel.